I remember the day that I quit my job like it was yesterday. I had my resignation letter typed in my desk drawer for weeks. One day my boss came into my office and he said, Steve, you know, come on in. So I sat down. Before he could get started, I took the opportunity. I rambled for 10 minutes about who I was and who I wanted to be and the meaning of life and so on and so forth. Halfway through it, I realized I was quitting my job. I was doing it. He let me finish. Quiet, confused. He leaned forward on his desk and he said, Steve, I called you in the office today because I was going to promote you. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it didn't matter, though. The next eight months after that moment, I left. I call it my radical sabbatical. I sold everything except for a motorcycle. I drove 14 states, nine countries, three continents. I left because I was in search for how I could restart my life, become an entrepreneur, and find purpose. It was drastic, but that's how I was going to do it. When I was 13 years old, stepping back, I was the quarterback of a middle school football team. The high school team, the coaches, were very much looking forward to myself and some other good athletes coming up and turning around a terrible football program. So, the summer leading up to that first day of practice, I started playing golf. Never played, just for fun. I became so consumed, I didn't just love golf, like I loved golf. I no longer wanted a, a football scholarship. For some reason, I wanted a golf scholarship. I stunk. I was way behind. We didn't have a golf team at my high school. Nobody played. I didn't know how the heck I was going to do it, but I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. I got a lot of flack for that, but four years later, I accepted a full ride to the University of Delaware to play golf, not football. So both of those stories are small examples of rebellion in my life. Now, they didn't reshape the world. They reshaped my world. But whether we're talking about massive societal shifts and changes we're talking about changes in our own personal lives, bridging the gaps in our own personal lives. Successful change can always be traced back to one root attitude. And that's a rebellious attitude. Because rebels are change agents, and change agents are habitually nonconformist. Have you ever heard anybody say repeatedly, I want to I change the world? Or they want to change their own personal circumstances? Of course you have, right? But why? Why do, they not, why do they not follow through? It's because the fear of rejection is what stops people. The fear of rejection has stopped change, no matter the size or the context, forever, and it will continue to do so. You'll notice people, organizations, they will oppose change. They will challenge change. They will try and stop change. They will try to stop you from making an unpopular decision. But whether you're forwarding civil rights or you're doing something that you intrinsically know is the right thing to do for you in your life, you must have a rebellious attitude, kind of like a, a screw it attitude. Like, I'm going to do it anyway attitude. I'm going to do it anyway and I don't give two shits what anybody else thinks attitude. <laughs> because in order to sustain change, cultivate it, keep it moving forward, you will fight a barrage of people trying to stop you and you must have a rebellious attitude. So rebels are often personified as being, what, like badass, right? Kicking butt, taking names, staging coups, telling bosses, hey, go screw yourself, I'm out of here, right? Kicking over the potted plant on the way out the door, say, hey, screw you too, plant. <laughs> it's not true. Not true at all. Two years ago, my grandmother was on her deathbed. She had internal bleeding, major organs failing, she was on a liquid diet, it was doctor's orders. All she wanted, and she asked the doctor, is that I just want a peanut butter sandwich. She was on a liquid diet, the doctor said no. I mean, you know, loosen up doc, it's like days left to live. Like peanut butter sandwich, right? So what does she do? She said to her son, son, go to the store, get me a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter. The woman was having a peanut butter sandwich. And I, and I love this part. Two years later, doctors can't explain, modern medicine can't explain why she's the healthiest, feistiest, 
88-year-old woman from Boston Red Sox fan that you don't want to tell what to do. <laughs> so what did she know that her doctors and modern science didn't even know? Hey, uh, hey Ma, the, the, uh, the doctor says no hard foods. Hey, you go tell that doctor to go pound sand, huh? That's, that's my grandmother. That's a terrible Boston accent, but that's my grandmother. <laughs> and we believe that she's here today, and she's here today because of that. Yeah, give it up. Because of that sandwich. Yeah, she's waving. That's why she's here. <laughs> but we watched her recovery change with her attitude, and my talk today is not just a rebellious attitude to cultivate change, but attitude in general. But rebels and change agents will always be mocked and criticized. Right? So my last day of work, I overhear two people talking about me, two coworkers, and I hear one of them say, you know what, Steve, he's just so entitled, oh, he's entitled. He wants to travel the world and be an entrepreneur and take all these risks, but he's not willing to earn his stripes. Why doesn't he do what I'm doing? Work hard now, save, you know, retire when you're 50 then travel the world and start a business. That's what I'm doing. A, that didn't make sense to me. I could be dead tomorrow, right? B, it wasn't what my gut was telling me to do. It's what conventional thought was telling me to do. The smart thing, the road more traveled, but it wasn't what my gut was telling me to do. When I got into the halls in ninth grade, it's intimidating enough. I mean, you guys remember, right? You show up for your first day of high school, I was hit with a barrage of insults. Word got around that Steve didn't show up to play football. Oh, he didn't? No, why? Oh, he's, he's playing golf. Golf? Like, we don't golf. My high school was in the country. Golf wasn't cool. There was no Tiger Woods. Steve's playing golf? I heard it insults, not just from students. I heard it from teachers. I heard it from parents, coaches. You know, it's really hard, no matter the size of the change that you're trying to make, to keep moving forward, whether you're 13 or you're 30, you're doing small change or large change, the hardest thing is to go against conventional wisdom and thought. But once you realize that your own instincts are actually stronger than conventional wisdom, the world suddenly becomes beatable. Like you control it. It no longer controls you. Thinking like a rebel, you start to manifest your own destiny, willing dreams and change to come true. You no longer care what other people think. Because if you did, the rebel and the change within you would die. The rebels have what I call a screw it attitude, right? Screw it attitude. Now I substitute in the F word for emphasis, but today it's going to be the screw it attitude. <laughs> when you know in your gut change that needs to be made, whether it's personal, or change you need to see in the world, you must have a screw it attitude. Examples, you're, uh, you're at work, and your boss is telling you to do your job one way, but you know you could show how smart you are, you could do it your way, it'll help the company, your colleagues, your boss look good, screw it, do it your way. Show them how smart you are. Education in your town needs reformation. Oh, but the bureaucracy is just too much. Screw it. Bulldoze away. If there's a passion behind it, there's a way. Tired of your job or you want to change careers, be your own boss? Just tired of it? Commuting one hour each way? Wasting away in a cubicle under fluorescent lighting that makes you look like Caitlyn Jenner on a good day, feeling like Lindsay Lohan in a court hearing as your boss berates a meetings report that came up short? I've been there, man. Feels good to quit follow your gut. Do it. You don't have to be, you know, a badass. You don't have to be, you know, kicking butt, taking names to be a rebel. You don't have to go tell a doctor to go pound sand. It's the act of resisting convention. That's it. Just following your gut and resisting convention. So, you know, as you can tell, rebels and changes, they got to screw loose, right? Just a little bit. But today, I'm a screw-loose, happy entrepreneur. I am. And my business helps other businesses and other entrepreneurs pursue their dreams and their goals. And I tell them this story because if they're going to be disruptive in their market, 
they need to learn to swim upstream with a rebellious attitude. So, embrace that rebellious attitude. Feel how good it feels to be a rebel, to think like a rebel, not wearing it on your sleeve for the world to know, but in here. Feel how good that feels. Go out, find change you want to make or change you want to see in the world. And with a peanut butter sandwich in one hand, <laughs> telling anybody that tells you otherwise, go pound sand. <laughs>